All right. Um, thanks for joining us. As Kendra said, um, my name is Shawit Johannes, and I'm a graduate. I'm also, um, I work directly with Judy Lee and also a veteran, uh, was a veteran student. So if you have any veteran questions, I'm here to help as well. So let's just talk about the degree really quickly. Fast facts. These are some questions or answers to some questions that we normally receive during webinars or one offs and emails. So I just want to address them uh, in case you have the same questions. So number one, this is a STEM degree. Um, anyone looking for a longer OPT, this will provide you that. Uh, also, students often or prospects often wonder if they didn't have a coding or computer science or mathematics background. Um, can they actually do well in this program? And the answer is yes. Yes, you do have to be a little more comfortable with mathematics in general, of course, as this is, a, this is more so a statistics degree. But uh, we have people from diverse backgrounds. My background was international business um, and a few others who were in computer science. Um, but that doesn't, I, we never looked at it as someone is doing better than the other. It's actually looked at as someone can help out other students. Uh, which I'll get into when, when I talk about the Business and Data Analytics Club. Um, this degree, it usually would take about one and a half to two years. It can be done in about a year and a quarter, which is what I did, but that's because uh, I took more than what the normal cor uh, course load would be. And the normal course load is about three courses per term. Uh, and I was able with approval to take four courses per term, but I will say I was not working at the time and it was um, pretty pretty tense, so intense, I'm sorry. So uh, just be aware of which courses that you're taking if you do ask for permission to take uh, more. And what's our schedule like? We have three terms a year, 15 week terms with about a week or two in between the terms depending on what the holiday is, whether it's summer or um, the um, winter holiday. Uh, this is a practitioner based learning environment. What does that mean? Good question. Um, so we have our instructors are actually people who work in the real world today during the day as their normal um, full-time job. In the evenings, they teach the students. And how is this uh, helpful? Well, this is more so you get to learn what is actually happening in the now versus what um, uh, other instructors in other universities may have learned about and sort of not really um, updated or maybe they updated every few years, whereas ours is directly um, what's happening to date based on the, uh, the instructor and uh, the industry that they work in regarding analytics. If you would like to take this um, degree program online, you can do so. Uh, also during COVID, that's what's happening this summer term. Everyone who signed up for an in-person course got switched over to online, except it is synchronous online, meaning uh, you meet once a week as you would have done in person, except you do it via Zoom, similar to this webinar. Um, I don't think word has gotten out about fall, so I can't tell you exactly if it will be offered both online and in person. Um, we will get with you regarding that, but registration does not start until mid-July, so we'll definitely have an answer um, before that. Now, uh, I, I sort of briefly touched on asynchronous and synchronous. So asynchronous since, um, simply means that uh, you have your course that's 15 weeks and you have certain deliverables per week, but you don't actually meet and have a certain set time to uh, discuss. Synchronous means you do meet, um, whether it's online or in person. Now, these courses, again, as I said, we have um, instructors who work during the day and uh, provide you real-time knowledge. Because of that, we also have students who work during the day as well. Um, because of that, our courses are offered in the evenings. Now, normally if it's in person, it would be 650, but since uh, we've shifted to purely online for the summer, the majority have moved to 4 p.m. Western uh, uh, Pacific time to accommodate our East Coast students. Again, we'll provide you an updated um, sort of memo on what will happen for the fall. And in the course, in the, the class is about two and a half hours per, uh, per week if it's synchronous. Um, and if you are actually gonna be uh, <laughs> in the building, it's just a few minutes walk from um, the BART, which is sort of our metro, and the uh, Muni, which is sort of the bus slash metro situation. Just a few minutes walk down the street and you're good to go. And a lot of people ask, where do the graduates go? Where do they work? 
we've got a number of graduates that, um, as listed here, Oracle, GitHub, excuse me, Endless Tech, First Republic. Uh, I know another is, I believe it's Sun Power. Um, they're, they're all over the place and doing well. So, um, and we, we constantly try to reach out and uh, uh, get information from them as far as how they were able to land their position regarding them being either domestic or international students. Okay. All right, um, Judy, do you wanna go over the um, new program that we have? <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, Judy, I believe you're muted yep. if you're speaking. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so we have a, a revised program starting in the fall. Um, this program has added a concentration in analytics management, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But everyone who takes this degree must start with a foundation in statistics. So if you're coming into the university with uh, both descriptive and inferential uh, statistics in your educational background, you can waive that course. Otherwise, you would take the course as the first one coming into the, the program. Most of the degree programs in the business school require this course called Data Analysis for Managers. The degree itself is, consists of 36 credits, and um, there are courses that you have to take, whether or not um, you have a background in math or you don't have a background in math or statistics. Uh, the advanced, what we call the advanced courses are 18 in number. Uh, the first is the overview of the degree or overview of the actual discipline of analytics. That's the 300 course foundations of business analytics. Uh, that course includes a, a four week effort in doing a Harvard Business School simulation on analytics that is kind of the cap of the course. The next course is uh, Enterprise Performance Management and Metrics and that talks about how uh, key performance indicators are tied to the strategic objectives of the company because what you're trying to do with analytics is to gain a competitive advantage over the guys down the street. 304 is Managing Data Structures. It has a different acronym at the front of it because it actually is in the IT degree, but this is a course that introduces both relational and or a structured and unstructured databases. Uh, for those of you who have uh, are working in business and working with data, you probably already know that your data is sitting in transactional databases within your company, but not all data fits into those databases. Uh, we have, of course, M MSBA 305, which is business intelligence, and that's looking at the history um, of your transactions and what's happening currently in order to try to predict the future. 320 is advanced statistics with R and Python. This is your introduction to the two most um, popular programming languages used in analytics. Um, and they're taught on a baseline of advanced statistics. So when you get out of Math 240 with your uh, foundational uh, information or, or uh, teachings about analytics, you're still going to take another course in analytics. So um, that's what MSBA 320 is. Um, MSBA 395 is an advanced course, but it is the last course that you take in the degree. It's called a capstone, which is uh, an opportunity for students to take everything that they've learned and apply it to case studies uh, that are real-time case studies in the marketplace. And also the opportunity for those of you who are interested in field research and internships, uh, we don't have an internship in this degree. There's not enough room for it. So what we've done is we've embedded field research. It's called a practicum, by the way. We've embedded that field research in the capstone course. So a third of your capstone course is actually doing field research. If you work for a living already, you can do that field research with your current company. If you are um, an international student and you don't have any connections uh, with the business world over here, we can help you find those connections. And we actually have um, sponsors who we work with where the students get to go to investigate how analytics works in their companies or their departments. So um, you don't have to worry about going out there and finding an internship as soon as you arrive. 
Then there are the electives. You get to choose six out of eight. And the first is uh, what, the first of one of our AI courses, artificial intelligence courses. And it's about data integrity and risk mitigation, but it's proactive. It's not when you finally are hacked or when you finally find out you have a problem, you try to react to it. You're using AI in this course to try to anticipate when a problem is going to happen. The next course, 321, is Big Data Ecosystems or Ecosystems. And that's a course that deals with the, what's called the Hadoop or MapReduce environment. Those environments are set up to use um, databases that are unstructured. So we're talking about voice, we're talking about um, um, sensors, we're talking about weather indications, we're talking about anything that's coming in to your world as analytics data, but will not fit in the standard transactional database. The next course is Master Data Management. Master Data Management treats uh, data as a resource of the company. It is an asset and companies value that as an asset. A master data management uh, talks to you or through the processes of how do you do that. The next course is web and social network analytics. That uses our language to um, understand how analytics are, data is captured and analytics are implemented using the social networking environments and also how to use it to develop your websites. 326 is the second AI course. It's machine learning for predictive analytics. And this is a course that shows you how computers can be trained to um, understand the data that's coming in. And we use machine learning in just about everything we do in this world, folks, but you probably aren't even aware of it. 327 is natural language processing. For those of you who are in a visa situation, um, you need to do what Mike says. You need to apply as early as possible. We are in strange times now with this COVID-19. So all the administrative folks that are ordinarily on site at, a, at an institution, whether it's a a university or a company or whatever, many of them are working from home. So you need to have your, give yourself a little leeway there and um, get your application in as soon as possible to make sure that all of your documentation gets here so that we can um, review it. Okay. Um, so I believe you answered the second question when you asked where the, when the next program starts um, early September and registration begins in on July 13th, I believe. So it'd be great to have your application submitted much just, just earlier than that. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any questions, whether uh, in the chat or uh, voice? Hi, Sunil. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in uh, the for spring 2021. Okay, so I just wanted to know, uh, like, when will the uh, application start will happen for spring 2021? So accordingly, I'm currently on F2 visa. So accordingly, once I get my I20, I can initiate my visa change to F1. Uh, I'm sorry, it was a bit muffled. If um, it um. I, I, so I, uh, I'm able to answer that that question for you. Um, if you are if you are planning to go with a spring 2021 term, my yes. advice is the same because you will be you will be needing to get your F1 visa. Um, mm -hmm. We are already processing the spring 2021 application, and by the time we receive your submitted application, we will be able to to understand your situations more clearly and uh, specific to your circumstance, including your school worker, we'll be able to guide you on what documents we need to move forward with the admissions process. And again, the earlier you submit application, the early, because we are processing applications on an, enroll, in, on an enrolling basis. And like Dr. Lee said, this is especially critical during the COVID-19 time because we process applications as fast as possible. Um, but still, we are, we, most of our staff are working with Moli. So, so if you are not sure, if you are already sure, 
that you want to go with Spring 2021, but you are not sure how the visa steps would be would be um, the steps would be behind or would be what would be, what would the next steps be? After you submit your application, we'll guide you into the next step to get you into that step. Um, does that help answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we have a question from John. How is the business analytics certificate different than the degree program? Can I choose the courses I take from the degree curriculum? Uh, Dr. Lee, do you wanna? Okay, John, so right now the certificate, the business analytics certificate, um, well, it's different than the degree program because it doesn't require as many courses, obviously. So um, the courses that are in that degree certificate are already um, are already selected, and um, based on the fact that the, the certificate is for um, securing analytics uh, or competitive advantage from other companies, so we're focusing that on people who are in management. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't apply for the certificate. But uh, right now, those courses are locked in. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, any further questions, voice or chat? Any follow-up questions? Um, if you can't think of anything um, at the moment, we do have the emails of both Mike and myself listed here. Of course, the phone number is to the building, so uh, that's not going to work at the moment. But you have it just in case uh, for future reference. So I understand that if you are an international student and you need to start school with F1, um, some of your questions may be very personalized, specific, and private. And um, I know that you might not feel convenient to share on the chat room yourself. I am leaving my email address in the chat room so that if you have a specific question pertaining to your needs, you like a more private conversation, please feel free to give me an email and I can follow up with your inquiry. Thanks, Mike. Okay, well, uh, it seems as though we're good to go. Um, thanks for joining us. I hope we answered the majority of your questions, and I look forward to seeing you in the fall or spring. <laughs> um, not a problem, John. <laughs> so have a great week. Um, if you're in California, try to get a little sun and not burn, but um, have a good one. Thank yeah, you. Take care of yourselves, folks.